So when you were speaking yesterday, I said, wow, it will be fair, son, to stand by you to see the rebirth of a new Southern Kaduna. I, I am convinced and persuaded that God is about to reintroduce himself in this land again. For those of us who were there when the old temple was built, and now there seems to be a bigger one and the younger generation are celebrating and dancing. We cried. But I'm glad that the glory of the latter shall be greater. So our God will keep us and keep the fathers until we see the fulfillment of our travail. We are not going anywhere. That's why money can so change the name Baba. Because when they say Baba, they want to retire you. There's no Baba here. We remain young until we leave the stage. You don't age spiritually. No. There's no age. Or else, how old is God? Well, let's leave that for another. Thank you, sir. Uh, Apostle, for the thank you. You have just made my message simple. And thank you, Apostle, because you came in. You hit on the same. I'm going to lay three stones. Oh, three pillars. And I trust God that. You will build on it. Maybe when I'm through. I, I've been telling God to help me to calm down. But well, let me just mention the three pillars I've been laying before us this morning. Number one, the business of God is the business of the Spirit. I say it again. The business of God is the business of the Spirit period. Number two, the business of the spirit is the business of power. The business of the spirit is the business of what? And the business of power is the business of impact. I say it again. The business of power is the business of impact. And these three go together. Before I start, I want us to be on our feet this time around let, with a round of applause. Let's recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit in the house. Come out with a round of applause. Somebody wave your hands to the Holy Spirit. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. He is in the house. I say, He is in the house. The master is in the house. I said the Lord is in the house. Makanta raba baranta, yaka karaba barianda. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we recognize you. We acknowledge you. Come on, can I see your hands up and burn open the floodgates as we flow? Come on, come on, go ahead. Man, taka, baba, I'm not hearing you. Come on, let lose your spirit. Release yourself let right now. Have rain. some divine encounter with this. Let it rain. Open the floor gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain.
was the word but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until in other words you don't begin the business of God until somebody has to be ahead somebody has to start it it's not you it's not your ability it's not the body you carry the only one that can initiate and effect the business of God the enterprise of God is the spirit tarry you can't be ahead of the spirit and be part of God's business you will be on your own the Holy Spirit can't become number two in his business he has to be number one you can't be the number one in that prayer you can't be number one in that preaching you can't be number one in that ministry not by might, not by power but by my spirit said the Lord and we have too many people that are initiating the prayer and initiating the preaching and initiating the, the ministry for whatever ladies and gentlemen this is not the place of talents or ability it is the place of the spirit the absence of the spirit is the announcement of your irrelevance in this business enterprise may I remind you that the father could not speak he wanted to speak bring forth light bring forth the planet bring forth anything but he could not because by the, by the order of the kingdom nobody moves before the Holy Ghost nobody not even the father he could not it was when the Holy Ghost moved then God began to walk and you know when God walks he talks when God speaks he walks he could not engage himself in his business that had been the concern of his heart until the Holy Ghost moved and when the Holy Ghost moved, God began to speak. It's like, I've been waiting for you, Holy Spirit, all this while. Let there be light. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. There can never be until the Holy Spirit shows up. Pastors, this job is not a no Bible. This job is not about ability. I've always said it. Any intelligent, smart guy can preach this gospel anywhere, anytime. That's why today the pulpit is for everybody. No, sir, it's not for everybody. It's for those that are empowered by the Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost, no Bible. No Holy Ghost, no prayer. No Holy Ghost, no church. No Holy Ghost, no ministry. No Holy Ghost, no ministry. I don't know by what means you carry ministry. By what means you are praying. By what means you preach. I understand your body, Apostle. I understand. It was not like this when we started. No, we were not a noise. No competition, no strife. Something ate us. Something consumed us. Something got a hold of us. Something snatched us, brother. And we got lost. My wife looked at me one day and said, Are you a human being or a spirit? I said, I don't know. Because I was no longer behaving normal. Just got married. Less than 10 days one divine entity the monarch of Zion came with that announcement and arrested my life pulled me up from my wife you can't leave father mother I didn't do honeymoon somebody sir you can't engage yourself with this divine entity and be living this way it's not possible it's not possible and therefore this morning as I stand before you I call your spirits back to the Holy Ghost I call your souls back to the Holy Ghost I call your ministers back to the Holy Ghost I call your prayer meetings back to the Holy Ghost I call your Sunday school back to the Holy Ghost I call your prophetic utterance back to the Holy Ghost more so I speak with a burden because this is not a crusade this is not a revival meeting it's a prophetic strategic meeting that has to do with inner caucus that's why no, not everybody is here that we might be realigned that we might be reconnected to our roots again and see what the fathers told us let's see it in our days we don't want to read their stories we don't want to preach Elijah preach Paul 
every time we come and open the Bible and what Paul is saying and then what are you saying as Paul is saying to us where is Paul he has served this generation and he's gone we will serve this generation not by what they say we will serve this generation by God said the law and if you don't have the Holy Ghost brother who is ahead of you in this business you are on your own and guess what when the when the entities or the spirits on the other side begin to show up you become a casualty because life on the planet is a business of spiritual entities you are in this on this side you don't have the spirit not a spirit the spirit you'll be dancing and somersaulting you'll be praying and crying she be COVID-19 have just tested our levels whether we walk by faith or fear whether we actually have an encounter with God or we just have the stories of God the Bible says they that do know that God is not about reading Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you begin to hear our ears by Bible quotation no, those who had an experience those who had an encounter those who saw God those who had God, those who touched God those who saw him face to face when they come, they are not telling us a story, it's an experience and a man of an experience can stand anything, anywhere anytime those are not the people that backslide, backslide to where? nobody sees God and turn his back from him no matter what. Cross rivers not even knowing it. Climb mountains not even knowing it. I lift up my hands today and I declare may this generation have an encounter with the invisible. I said may this generation begin where they began in the upper room. May this generation begin where Moses began in the spirit. He had all the burden concerning bringing his people out of Egypt ended in fertility. Became a fugitive. Somewhere way down at the backside of the desert, this monarch of Zion showed for brother. And Moses had an experience with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm glad God didn't introduce himself that, that has anything to do with Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. He said, I am that I am. Forget about Abraham. Forget about. We are telling too many stories. Your encounter gives you a fresh message. Your encounter gives you a new song. Your encounter gives you a new, a new anointing. There is too much borrowing, borrowing, borrow anointing, borrow message, borrow prayer, prayer. There are books on prayer, apostle. The people are just reciting things as if. No wonder. We have the churches, we have the pastor, the impact. Where is it? This job is not done by ability, it's not done by a sabi sabi. It's not done by, I, I am better than you. No, sir. It's the work of the Spirit. I say it's the work of the Spirit. The prophets of old could not prophesy until they were moved. Jesus, born of the Spirit, could not engage himself in this kingdom business of his father that he came for 30 years. The only record we have is that at age 12, he sat and was arguing with the doctors of the law. Ladies and gentlemen, the history of the church has not been dotted by superior argument. The history of the church has been dotted by superior power. 30 years, Jesus, God in the flesh, you saw the sick, couldn't do anything. You saw the tradition in the church, couldn't do anything. You were just watching, and yet you are the Messiah, the Savior. Is that not a lesson to some of us? That not because I went to Bible school. Not because I, I have all the books about this man of God, that man of God. No man of God makes a man of God. I'm too hard though. And that's why I, I didn't come for everybody. I came for fighters in the house. Do we have fighters in the house? Do we have warriors in the house? Do we have people in the house that we can't take this rubbish anymore? God is more than this rubbish. All kinds of spirits today are dancing in the church, praying in the church, prophesying the church because we have lost the place of the spirit. All kinds of familiar spirits, seducing spirits. Ah, we are jamming, we are jamming with them in the house of God. But the day has come, brother. We're gonna power will jump power. 
spirit will jump spirit. There shall be a collusion in the spirit. And the house of God shall be poured. This buying and selling will cease. All this merchandise in the house of God. Your days are numbered. I told myself, I should calm down, calm down, calm down. Because if I don't calm down, it's good to preach with holy anger. We are too much of entertainers. This business that so serious. What shall it profit a man? He begins the whole world but loses his soul. Is this the place we do entertainment? Is this the place that we do in competition? Who has the greatest revelation or whatever? We are here to, to change lives. We are here that the sick be healed. The captive is set free. We are here to see your life transform. And in the name of Jesus, you are not going out of this conference with a doctrine. You are not going out of this conference with a philosophy. You are not going out of this conference with head knowledge. May, may, may you have an encounter. I am asking God to give us a generation of men and women that have encounter with Jehovah. The product of this 16 prophetic conference must be encounters. We want to know you by your works. Jesus could not. And therefore he looked at the disciples. You cannot. Because I could not. The father could not. The prophets could not. It is not this staying with me for three and a half years and you are just eating bread and butter. Every time there's a need I supply. Every time they save money I supply. You can't go like that. Ministry is not for babies. It's not a place of looking for food. It's not a place of money making. It's not a place whereby we raise up celebrities. It's not a place of human heroes. It's a place of dying to the flesh and dying to self. That a restoration might take place in your life. That we might see the transformation of your life, your family, your community, and your nation. And I think very seriously, this nation needs us more than ever before. See how COVID-19 push us to the push us aside. I get angry when I move on the street. They say, Are you a doctor? I say, No. Say, so why are you here? Every other person should be go inside. You say you are a pastor, they say we don't recognize your services. Whose services do you recognize? Services of the doctor who can only treat, but Jesus cures that at this time of it. A, a, a pandemic that the church could not then I told myself something is missing before COVID-19 came up God moved me to the mountain and I've been there sir we've come a long way but you know just as we talked at that time I am one not to start ministry next year then you ask me what have you been doing all around I've been zooming in the air you don't understand I'm a call evangelist but I found myself in church and I asked God, what am I doing in church? He says, it's a crucible to, to refine your life. Anointing is not enough. A uh, word is not enough. Until your life is refined and the Holy Ghost infuse your life. You can go, but something will stop you. And then we start telling the story. When I used to pray, no, you young, you young boys, when we were like you, and you know, we used to save me after. So should God be telling us how he used to save you? How he used to sustain the planet? There is no retirement in this journey. There is no looking back in this journey. We are them that put our hands to the plow and there is no looking back. We are them that say yes to the Lord and there can never be a no from my mouth. It doesn't matter what it takes, brother. We are ready to march on the move on because we have seen the monarch of Zion. The Bible says Moses, see him that is invisible. He despised. Apostle, we left money. Is it now we are going back to money? We saw the glory of this world, but it cannot be compared to the glory of the world to come. Is it now that the world will tempt us? We died a long time ago. What is sustaining the fathers, you young generation, is our consecration. I came to him in the place of prayer. To this day, prayer is my life. I'm just coming from the mountain. I have lived there since March to this day. I think if I've ever slept in Carpentry, it's not more than five days or seven. Seven days I've lived there. So what is coming? We have already seen it. And that's why me, me, I have weighed Satan. I have weighed all these witches and wizards. I have found them wanting. I'm about to judge them. You understand? 
We have put them on the scale of the spirit. We have weighed them, sir. We have seen the size. They are a thing of nothing. Now, here comes the judgment of witches and wizards. Here comes the judgment of familiar spirit. Here comes the judgment of sickness and disease. We're going to judge them because the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he must reign. And he must reign. And he must reign. And he must reign forever and forever. The church will continue this way. Forget about it. All those of you that talk about rapture, quick about I'm telling you, hey, Jesus, come, come for what? Go and meet him. When I get to heaven, Paul should sit down. Let me tell him about Nigeria. So I said Nigeria. Okay. Let me tell him about Southern Kaduna. I said Southern Kaduna. Should be on this Asia. My Southern Kaduna. You are not there. I have read all your records. You don't know my records. Sit down. Let me tell you the latest, the, the latest edition of the Bible. Me, I won't go to heaven and Paul is talking. No. There are things that happen they didn't know. Because the is from glory to glory. May you become a reference point. May your life be defined by a spirit, a spiritual entity. May your prayer life be defined by a spiritual entity. Can I hear you say amen? Can I hear you say amen? I want to say to our young men, your talents can't sustain you in that music ministry. If the Holy Ghost don't take over, you will somersault in iniquity. And I want to declare to you, enough is enough. Get the Holy Ghost. Pastor, it's not enough for you to just do church. May you have the Holy Spirit. Let's see men get born again. Let's see them safe again. Let's hear the hallelujah. Let's hear them say the Lord is good. Let's see a winning church. Let's see a triumphant church. I build my church and my church shall march on. And the gates of hell shall not, cannot prevail. From the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent death. Yes, you think I'm 30, I'm 62. And I can jump like this for the next 12 hours. Because when spirit comes, level change. When spirit comes, you know they tire. You know they sleep. You know they eat food. Because that is not the language of spirits. I can call it. Zamba call it. So that was why Jesus told him, Tari, Tari, don't make haste. I have held this microphone now for four decades. But it's amazing that I could look back and say, but what have I done? What have I done? I have never ever told myself I've done ministry. I've always been telling myself I'm warming up. When you prepare well, one day is equal to a thousand years. But when you don't prepare well, you spread your life. And then when you spread your life, you know they walk, you go catch here, catch here. Too many pastors are catching here and there. Bring charm, bring this one. You're confused. Sir, I have handled cases. Went to church, one church. One young man saw the grace of God upon my life. Said, I should be his father. I said, I don't know you. Invited him. I said, okay, let me just come. When I went there, now charging kindness to say. When I went, my eyes were red. When I finished, I said, fire! The first person was the pastor who went up and came down and knocked his, his two. They can't shake. When two powers jam, one must bow. So they're rolling. Followed me to a very car and told me the story of his life. Come and say, dragon. I said, at age six, divine entity from the ocean came into my life. And every month, first week of the month, that entity will show up and have an affair with me in the ocean. When he tells you the miracles he's doing, I mean, I have never seen such. At the point I got angry, I said, God, you're not fear. These are just boys that started yesterday for the kind of miracles that is happening. I couldn't just understand. When I saw what was
was how can I? I told myself that uh, -uh no go go this way. You know the last. Today I don't even know where he is, sir. If Jesus tarries, those of you who call fathers, you will still you will still see us leading in prayer, leading the world. Why? The foundation was Holy Ghost, sir. We didn't get born again by this kind of altar call. They say, come and give your life to Jesus. And so is chewing chewing gum. Somebody is uh, just coming suck at this. They, they, no, sir. We were at the crossroad. Witches were tormenting us. The religious church were attacking us. We needed a savior and needed him desperately. When we finally got to him, we said, this is the last bus stop. When I was baptized the Holy Ghost, I went from pillar to post. They said, first three days. Past seven days, three years running with a passion in my heart for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The day I jammed this divine entity, 13th of March 1986, 5 p.m. My friend, when you collide with him, you will just have no choice but to be crushed. I went in a trance, I was rolling on the floor. By the time I got up, I want to say, How are you? I said, Eriba Koroshanta. Everything changed about my life. It was that night he told me that I'm going to be a preacher and I told him that I'm not a spirit, I'm not, I'm not a, a ministry material. He said, no, 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 what makes men is me. Here am I today. If you really know me, I'm a, an extreme introvert. Changed my life. Since that encounter, sir, my life has never remained the same. I met somebody. Whom did you meet? Pastor? Whom did you meet? A prophet? Whom did you meet? A handshake from somebody? Home to do. You went to a school? More than that. Come on, I say more than that. Come on, I say more than that. Life change. You see, Moses stood from a fire and pointed at Joshua. That's the land. But Joshua is not to point his finger. Joshua must get there. This generation. This move of God is not for us to point the finger, our finger anymore. Say, look at salvation. Look at healings. Look at deliverance. We're going to take them there and force them to drink from the waters of salvation. It's healings. It's deliverance. We have pointed our finger for too, too long. Now we will take the land. We will take our inheritance. And that is why as I lift up my hand over you this morning, may you have a supernatural encounter in this meeting. You are not leaving this place to beg God for anything. You are leaving this place to take your place. Take your family. Take your inheritance. You are not leaving this place to negotiate anything with the devil. You are going to fight for your life. And fight for your family. And fight for your destiny. Can I hear you shout hallelujah. Too much crying in the church. Too much begging in the church. Too much apology in the church. Where is your God? Where? I'm a coral man. You don't tell us about spirit without something to show. No. Won't take you serious. And as a coral man, spirits are in two categories. They come in the form of masquerades. There are masquerades that are human beings, and there are other masquerades that are spirits. When masquerades are human beings, we play drums with them and they dance. And we dance with them sing with them. But when those other masquerade that are back up by spiritual entities, when they show up, the city, the town, the village is quiet. They don't take nonsense. They didn't come to your city to, to watch you. They came to take over. They don't come to the city to negotiate anything from you. They came as lords. They came as a force. They came as a power to rule. So when those big masquerades show up, the women one side, the children will go and lock themselves. Only men will show up. It is about time that the big masquerade of the church should show up. Too much women, too much children, too much running to hide, too much looking for a place to put your head and say, I am praying. Men come out. They don't bow their heads somewhere. Hey, I'm praying. I'm waiting on the Come and get out, man. When the real master show up, we don't, they don't play drums for us, brother. Whether drums or not drums, we take charge. Whether drums or not drums, brother, we rule. And with this understanding,
understanding when I came to church I came with a mindset of spirits that show up that manifest the back of my action and therefore in the name that's above every name this work that began in the spirit will not end in the flesh this work that began in the upper room will not end in the classroom this work that began with the Holy Ghost will not end up with religion and tradition. This work that began with fire can't end up with ashes. If we have not made contact with God, you wouldn't have been here. Sir, they didn't see us in the day of our eating kwakwa. They just saw the glory. But what sustained us, there was an encounter. Can you tell me or can you both beat your chest and say, I know the place, the time, the hour that I had encounter with God. Can you? If not, you have just joined us to sing. You have just joined us to dance. When the real issues come up, you will not be there. When the shaking comes, you will not be there. But in the name that is above every name, every chaff, every dross over your life, every spirit that is not the Holy Ghost that has taken over your life I command the name of the out your body is not a temple of demons and devils your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and this morning I ask the landlord of your life to return may the Holy Spirit return to your life return to your prayer life return to your ministry return to your anointing we have ignored the Holy Spirit for too long and that is why there is weakness in the church and casualty in the church those days are over. Over. Stand on your feet on a moment. I have to rush. Be on your feet. Lift up your right hand. And say, Holy Spirit, I return. Come and say with me. Say, Holy Spirit, I return to you. Holy Spirit, take over my life. Not by mind. Not by power. But by you. This work, I can't do it by my strength. It's not a work of a man. Come on, can you go ahead? I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, return, return. My life is yours. Is yours. Is yours forever. My heart is yours. Is yours. Is yours forever. Come on, are you talking to him? I, I didn't say pray. I said talk. Talk to him. Take your place in my life. You know your level. You know where you are spiritually. And therefore, I want us to open our mouth. The business of the kingdom is the business of the spirit. The business of prayer, the business of worship, the business of Bible study, whatever you call it, is the business of the spirit. If you don't start in the spirit, if it's not the Holy Ghost, you are on your own. In the name of Jesus. Come and say in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Just pray this morning that we we'll realign our spirit, souls, and body back to the Holy Spirit. That there be a, a realignment, oneness with the Holy Spirit. Our disparity, differences is too much. I just pray that you return back and submit and surrender and yield to him. When he takes over, amazing things. Number two. Acts chapter 1. When I have 10 minutes to go, give me a signal. Because I'm trying to leave. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What will you receive? What will you receive? Why power? The business of Jesus is not the business of power. The business of Jesus is the business of authority. Come on. Jesus came to restore authority. But the business of restoring power to make our, 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 our throne effective is the hand of who? Spirits. Even the, the magician, the herbalist, the occultic man is ruled by what? By power. Anybody that an entity does not back you by power, you become an apology. So the issue of back up by power to showcase what you are and to prove what you stand for 
is done by who? Spirit. Jesus said, you shall receive power. When? Was that the only thing the Holy Spirit was to do? No. But what will make the church thick? What will make the church, church a triumphant church? Is what? It's power. Let me say this. My granddad was a, a witch. All his life, he lead initiated people into witchcraft. My granddad. If my granddad comes to your village, he must become the chief priest by force, by fire. By what means? Power. My granddad wept one day because they offended him. He cried, and tears that came out of his eyes became a poem. Fill the room. So, when God picked me up, I didn't know that these entities, they don't have, their language is not grammar. Their language is power. I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ in 1980. No sooner have I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ, they showed up. And they began to speak. What language? They attacked me with tuberculosis. Because when the devil wants to speak to you, sir, one, one sickness, one this, that's their language. Because spirits don't speak grammar, they speak power. That's the language of communication. Not how, sir, not your voice. Power. When that happened and I went to the religious men and they told me that it's my cross. I said, what? Cross? I said, that's not, that's not what I know on the other side. On the other side is power. When the medical doctor that was handling my case told me that I would die. I said, uh-uh. I came to this side because they told me that all power belongs to God. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I did something that I didn't think twice about it. I threw my Bible on the floor. I said, where are you? If I were on the other side, I know what would happen. Now that I'm here and I'm told that all power belongs to you. And forever will go to what is settled in heaven. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. And that Jesus did miracles. And I can't die in the hands of witchcraft. I can't die in the hands of magicians. And I knew that the powers of my foundation were rising to contest and to, to find out who is that of God. They're not asking for this. Who, what is he up to? I threw the Bible on the floor. They said, ah, it can't happen on this side. I came for greater power. I came for greater manifestation. And suddenly I was not doing magic. I was just being desperate. And the scriptures open up the Isaiah 53 verse 5. Wounded for transgression. Bruce for iniquity. As I was reading that verse, as if I was hearing the voice, and the power came upon me. And I got out of my sick bed and I jumped on my feet and I said, I am healed. November 83. That was a turning point in my life that I knew that this God is a reality. That a change cannot, does not happen because you go to church. A change happens when you meet somebody. I came to a and and I started ministry. They showed up. Thank God for apostles. When those entities rose up from my village, before it happens, I saw myself hanging under one pond in my village. And the dead, that's where they fed the waters. And it's from my family. So it means I'm coming from a foundation where there's already an oil. And I saw them coming to push me into that pond by fire, by force. God sustained me for over five hours. I woke up in the morning. It's like fever. It's like pneumonia. I went for a test. They told me, are you a H? That I'm a HIV positive. That my lungs are shattered. Can I shan't have a No. Can I shan't get a No. We passed to Chinzamani. How can you tell us that you don't drink, you don't smoke? Look at your x-ray. The other person who was HIV full blown, his x-ray was better than my own. But to that day, I was still going to church and preaching. Powers. When I got to church, they told me two months. Then they were examined and over. After 10 days, I was discharged. Thank God for the support I received then. You knew the story, sir. Sir, do you know that before I got to the village, the news have reached my village that the man is back home. I went straight to my village. A woman pulled me to one corner and said, where did you hide? We look for you. We couldn't find you. It was not long my village gathered at the market square with all the, 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 the juju and everything and declared that my God is the true living God. And that was the day my
my village gathered in Market Square and denounced their gods and acknowledged Jesus Christ as the supreme authority and power. Before then, they have disowned me, persecuted me, they, they, as far as I know, where are the witches? But when power jump power, somebody bow. And I declare as we leave this conference, conference, somebody must bow. You are bow for too long. You are begged for too long. It's time for somebody to bow. It's time for something to bow. It's time for something to give way. That's a praise the Lord. Sir, when power show up, they will look for you. After that encounter, every time they cannot sleep in the village, they come for me. I get back to the village and say, come, come fight these witches. And let me tell you, November this year, I'm going back to the village to be the guest speaker in the LCC that is not Pentecostal. They invited me last year, I couldn't make it. This time again, they came again. LCC conference. That it has nothing to do with the Pentecostal. But I'm going to be the guest speaker. You know why? When power shows up, denomination gives way. Our differences are so much. Sir, they rich, the poor, they all get sicko. The white, the black, they all get sicko. And they're looking for some other solution. And in the name of Jesus, you will carry something. I say you will carry something. When you speak, there must be something. When you dance, there must be something. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something in our dancing. I said there is something in our singing. I said there is something in our preaching. When the Holy Ghost is there, there is going to be something. And in the name of Jesus, you won't carry emptiness. You are going to carry something. There's going to be a force in you. There's going to be a power in you. The church can no longer be a voice. The church must become now a force. Thank you so very much, sir. You gave us direction. You pointed us across the river. We will not stand on this other side and be looking across the river. We're going to cross the river. We're going to climb those mountains. We are taking our inheritance. We are taking our position. We are taking our children. We are taking our family. We are taking Southern Kaduna. We are taking Kaduna State. We are taking Nigeria. The kingdoms of this world must become the kingdoms of our God and of His Christ. The weakness in the church because of lack of encounters must die. What is causing the weakness in church is lack of divine encounters. Check through the scriptures. The men that mattered, something happened. Was an encounter. This generation, sir, until we tell them God is still far, still in the realm of imagination. Let me say something. What is keeping us still strong is because of what we contacted. When I got born again, I went to the village with the Father of God. I was doing deliverance, and I said, Come out. They were looking at me. They were looking at me. When they in demons, they are all cultured. Not even. Then they are now turning my darling and I say, May Wuta! They were ancient demons and devils. That civilization has not reached them. And in this land, sir, and many lands in this nation in Africa, there are all civilized witches and wizards that your grandma, they know they hear that one. They don't know social media. They don't know downloading anything. All these Boroboro messages, they don't know it. They are so, they're so raw, so rude. They wonder why we shout. If you know where I'm coming from, I'll not shout it. When they masquerade in my village, when they're coming, they shout. And I'm going back to shout at them. Ah, Kapubia. In my village, when masquerade are coming, they make me shout. So I've learned to shout. Devil, come out. I was preaching one day and a lady, a small girl touched the, the mother and said, Mama, his pastor angry. Look at the way he's preaching as if somebody offended him. Mama touched the baby and said, Baby, pastor is fighting devil, devil. Somebody said, Pastor is fighting devil, devil. You don't fight laughing. You don't fight closing your eyes. You open your eyes and become serious. I didn't come to preach. Oh. We have to wait for revival. Apostle, thank you very much. 
But it takes an iron to sharpen an iron. It takes a man that carry fire to begat fire. Too many dry, too many dry things in the house of God. I have come to provoke somebody to fight. Outside the pulpit, I'm so gentle, Lord. so calm. But we put me behind the pulpit. It's a different man. Why? You can't carry spirit, and then you will bow your head. No, you can't carry spirit and be looking for negotiation to strike a deal. No. From March, I've been in Alberta camp. Now, don't follow my steps. Oh. They say no police. I say yes. No, this one. Yes. They say they are full of I say I don't know human beings. Do they have spirit? Are they doing what they are doing by their own power? They say no. I say forget about it. We understand the language. Sir, you can't make a big mountain survive. Do like I say, I've been a kataka. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Therefore, I lift up my hand this morning to declare that in the name that's above every name, will all you get and get power. What will cause you to survive this season is the power of God in your life. Whether you're singing, let there be power. You're preaching, let there be power. You're sharing, let there be power. You're making announcements, let there be power. Whatever you're doing, there must be power. The reason is because where there is power, there is impact. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 4 verse 16. Acts chapter 4 verse 16. Are you here with me? Come on, can I hear a louder amen? Amen. Acts chapter 4 verse 16 saying what shall we do to this man for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. Why? Something happened. Impact. When I caught the fire of God I never attended social gathering. For years in my church they were doing marriage even my own pastors where wedding, I didn't attend. Anything social gathering, won't see me there. At first, my pastor got angry, everybody got angry. How do you say you care? How do you say you love? I, I, I couldn't fit in. Because all my life, me, I'm of old, the old school. I'm not a social guy. So even when I come to church, when they're dancing, I'll be sitting down and be looking. It's now that I'm dancing, you know, I'll just be looking at you. My children asked me, say, Daddy, in the, in the church, you are frowning. At home, you are frowning. Are we all demons? We understand when in church you are frowning, but at home you are still frowning. I said, you don't understand. That's how I'm brought up. But you know, I'm, I'm but sir, so there are adjustments sometimes that are not coming at you, okay? So they were getting uncomfortable. But one thing is that when they're sick, they come to me. When demons attack them, they come to me. When they now discover that my prayer is meeting a need in their life, they now told me, sir, don't come for a way, don't come for a marriage ceremony or whatever. But when our children are sick, come. When we have when demons come, so come. What saved me as a pastor? The kind of a pastor I was that would not attend any ceremony, not attend wedding, my church would have died. But there was impact they can't deny. The fact that I didn't attend the wedding ceremony. I didn't they know that there is an there is something that when it happens in their lives, I'll be there for them. Sir, there must be something that will bail you out. Bail you out of your singing. Bail you out of your preaching. There must be something that you can boldly say, such as I have. Give up. Give up. This land is opening up. Not because we are politicians. This land is opening up by virtue of impact. I can move in the metropolis of this city from one angle to the other. Nobody will raise a stone against me because of impact. They have tried severally to burn our church. They could not for years. Every other building can go down, not our own, because there is an altar that speaks. Today, everywhere I go, they say, Daddy, Daddy, not because they are members of my church, but one day they had an issue, they had an attack. Sometimes 1 a.m., sometimes. 
I mean, I don't get protocol at any time because I'm still young anyway. Because the day that you grow, you can't do that. But at this level, they come without, where are you? Are you on the mountain? I said, you want me to come down? So we're coming. Now I've told them, I'm not in the mountain. You know what? We can't be praying for them. There's some people that should be praying for themselves. But what is giving us, causing us to raise our head is impact. Don't use money to raise your head. Use impact. Let your life speak to somebody. Let your life affect somebody. Let your prayer affect somebody. Let your anointing affect somebody. With this, I raise my case. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jump on your feet, everybody. Can we just stand on our feet? Can we just rise up on our feet and just give God's glory? I just give God's glory for all the word that we've received this day. Can we rise on our feet? Please, let's rise with Jesus' joy. As we put that hand together for Jesus and bless him and give him glory. To him alone be the 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 glory. We thank Jesus for everything. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, fathers have given instructions. Attend to it. Hearken to it. By so doing, you will prosper. You will not be small. You will be great. See you at 3 o'clock. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. We're so grateful. The Lord renew your strength. We're so grateful.